Tom here from Learn Systems, and how much memory do you need for ZFS? And wait, I know it must be you need for each terabyte of storage, you need at least so many gigabytes of memory. There's some formula, right? Mm, it's a little fuzzier than that, and that answer has been at the top of Google search results for I think too long because that's not the most accurate way to do this. What we're gonna cover in this video is one, that you don't need that much memory for ZFS, but if you do use lots of memory, you're gonna get better performance out of ZFS. I've got a couple of videos where I dive into the why, which is of course caching. The more memory you throw in there, the better the arc cache will be, therefore the better performance. That video is linked down below where I demystify hopefully the ways that the cache system works. Kind of a side note is what about ECC? Isn't that a requirement for ZFS? Isn't my data at risk? And I'm putting all of this data, you know, in, in the hands of one bit flip and destroying all of it. That's not true either. I've got a video talking about ZFS being a cow, copy on write file system, and don't worry, the data integrity is fine even if you're not using ECC. Is it better to use ECC? That's a general yes, because from a computing standpoint, having error correcting memory is a good thing, but it's not a required thing in order to do this. So I wanted to clear those up right away. Now let's dive into, and we're gonna talk specifically about TrueNAS, but this applies to GF ZFS in general when you're setting this up for how much memory you need for your ZFS system. Okay, we're gonna start at the low end. This is my low end Intel Atom system. This is what I call my purple NAS because I had a handful of Western Digital Purple drives that I put in here, four of them to be specific. Let's actually look at the storage real quick here and we'll see that I'm only using four terabytes out of 22 terabytes that are still free. So just under 30 terabytes of storage on this. This just keeps backup copies of things. So performance is not an issue. Uh, they're backups in my videos. So I'm not worried about how long it'll take to get them back. But if my main NAS fails, hey, I got a second copy. But I restarted it just a little while ago because I wanted to just clear it from copies I've done when backing up and putting files on it to show you that with eight gigs of memory, it's still not even using. I have 5.5 gigs free. Now, if I start copying files back and forth, it will use some memory. And if we go and look at the services I'm using in it to get the data back and forth, such as rsync, I have an rsync job that talks to it. I've got SMB if I need to copy some files to it. SSH, which is part of facilitating ZFS send. So my main video editing, TrueNAS copies all the data back over to this one on a very regular basis because, hey, why not? It doesn't take much. It's only doing differential copies. So this job actually runs frequently, but it just doesn't take a lot of performance. And as you note, I have quite a bit of terabytes of storage that don't match up with the amount of memory and the system is completely functional and works well. No, other than it being slow, but it's slow because that Intel Atom more than anything else combined with some older spinning Rust drives. Now let's talk about my video editing system. When you get to TrueNAS scale versus core, there's some differences specifically because scale is built on Linux. By default, it does not use all of the memory. It will only use about half of it. So we do have 64 gigs of RAM in my video editing system because I could probably even use more. All the videos, and actually this is why it's under load, my videos as I record them right directly to this system. They're getting cached. This makes it really fast when I got to pull those videos into the editing software. So that comes right out of cache. And because I've modified the parameter, I'll leave some notes in the description below to tell it to use 50 gigs of cache. It's using 50 gigs of ZFS cache. There's always files moving back and forth in my video editing. This gets me much better performance. Now, even though this is SSD volumes, they won't quite peak out that 10 gig NIC, but they'll come way closer to peaking out the 10 gig NIC when you're pulling things right out of memory. So this is where having more memory does help quite a bit. Now let's move over to one of our production core systems at my office. And this system has a 128 gigs of memory. It's pretty much all used all the time for ZFS caching. There's some services going on because we run several S3 uh, targets for different backups that land here. And this system benefits from having a lot of memory. It would benefit more with more memory. Well, we still got 5.2 gigs free, so maybe not that much more. But this is using all the cache for serving up the virtualization targets that talk to it or some of the backup and restores. When I do backup restores, they pull from this. When I have my virtual machines running NFS, this is the storage target for them. And because NFS and VMs are gonna be a lot of frequent writes or frequent reads more specifically uh, for database stuff that's getting pulled, it just gets all in the cache and serves this up very fast. Now this does have 27 spinning Rust drives in it, but the cache will supplement and really make those frequently called files, which is a typical use case, 
serve up extremely fast combined with a fast processor to get the data back and forth there. And this system actually performs and has the IOPS performance similar to an SSD array. It's not going to be a one-to-one -one comparison. It's going to vary by workload, but this is an example of where having a lot of memory helps a lot. When we have clients that have large virtualization systems and are using TrueNAS Core as a large target for those, we load up as much memory as reasonable to their budget. Budget's usually a constraint at some point for how much you buy, but loading a system up with 512 for a TrueNAS system is not uncommon because it will give you really good read performance for all those frequently accessed files, or in the case of like a system running 80 or 100 virtual machines across several different hypervisors and pulling the data off here, or in the case of video editing, we have a lot of clients in that space uh, that are more than just a single editor like myself. If you have a team of editors pulling files, pulling them out of memory is always going to be faster than pulling them off the drives. As I said in the beginning of the video, I use TrueNAS as an example, but it does apply to really any system using ZFS. You don't have to have a lot of memory, but the memory will greatly help the performance of whatever system is running ZFS. So it's allowed to use more memory, means better caching. That caching video, I dive deep into the details of that. ZFS is really smart and intelligent. It'll take all the memory and all those files back and forth and commit them there so any service requesting them can get at them faster. But if it doesn't have them, you're just going to pull off the drives and work at whatever rate that operates at, depending on your system configuration. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, or to engage me further on this, head over to my forum for a more in-depth discussion. Thanks.